Hi, I'm going to make a demonstration of how you can use Runway for your own project. I received a couple of questions regarding how you could feed your own dataset to the software. So I'm going to explain how you can do that. Um, mainly how you can use the software uh, to experiment. So it's really simple. The first thing you have to do is to download the software. And to do that, you just go to the web page and click download. And once it downloads, you will have your software in your computer. And you click to open. And it will show you three options. One is browse models, open workspaces, or train a model. We could go straight to train a model, but I also want to show you some of the models that are already available. As I mentioned in my blog post, these models have already been trained with dataset, so the results are not custom. But they are really interesting to see all the possibilities of the, of the technology. So you can find things like, for example, stylized images in the style of famous paintings, or enhance and hallucinate patterns in image, detect objects, create prompts from a paragraph. Uh, sorry, generate paragraphs from a prompt or create kids' portraits, or play with things from The Simpsons. They are really fun um, models. And I encourage you to explore them and see if you can imagine new things for your work, or just experiment. So, if you want to train your own model, you have to go here, training, and you can train models with text or image. In this case, we are working with image, so we click here. And we put a name to our project. New test. Okay, so create. And here you upload your data set. It's important that your data set has more than 500 images and also that your data set is clean. By clean I mean that the images are ideally in a white or like plain background. If you feed images that have too much information the computer will get confused. But maybe you want that so it's not like a constraint. Maybe you want to see what like a lot of um, content, how, how the computer processed a lot of content. But in this case, I wanted like clean image. So I put special attention and work in generating a clean data set. So you go, oh, I think it was here, max. Okay. You load your max. This will take time and I already load them so we don't have to wait. And my marks are here. I only was able to find 408 images. That it's pretty good. So you click next. And then you select StyleGAN2, that is like the update updated version of StyleGAN. If you want to know more about this model, you can search for it in Google. In the web page Medium, you can find really interesting articles talking about these specific models and the reach and the possibilities uh, of it. So you click Faces because the model has already been trained with this. If we wanted to train the model from scratch, it will take like weeks and a lot of money and effort. So we use this model. 
Um, and then you put 3,000 steps and the estimated time will be two hours, okay, for the model to be fed with all your data set. And you click start training, okay? And the software will start working. You can leave it just loading in the back of your computer and do all other stuff meanwhile. But I already loaded, so I'm going to click stop and I will show you the results that I got from the first experiment that was trained only with my Max. Okay, so the synthetic images I got by training with my own Max was very similar to what I've already been making. So it wasn't really like surprising. I thought, oh, it's cool, but I'm not seeing nothing interesting. Okay, so I started wondering what would happen if I combined my work with something that I find uh, beautiful or interesting, more like thinking about uh, what inspires you or, or thinking about your mood boards. So what I did was mix my I mixed my data set of max with uh, a data set of bases that I found in in the Met Museum the images were open access so I was like concerned about the copyright aspect of this so yeah you can always find images that are open access or I don't know, without copyright, if you look for it. So in the Internet Archive, this web page, you can also find a lot of interesting material. So I mix uh, my maps with bases and I loaded this data set. This data set is the combination of my maps with Basis. You can do like this test, mixing your work with another work you find interesting. And here I find it's beautiful because you can think about collaborations. Maybe you have a friend that also has um, work that you find inspiring and you can create a digital version of the combination of your work him or hers. So you once again load the data set, the combined data set, and you wait for it to be ready. And I already have, have it ready, so it's here. Okay, so in this case you put next, you select style gun again, and you don't choose the faces this time. You go and you pick your model that you've, uh, you've got from the first experiment. So in this case, it's the max that look alike to my work. And once again, you click Start Training. Okay, so this is just one, al one alternative of many uh, that you can start exploring and experimenting. So you, you get one data set and then you can combine it with another data set and from that data set you can combine it again with another body of work. So here it's really up to you um, where the limits are. So it's nice about thinking you are really the one who is being creative and, and loading the content to the software. The machine without the help of a human is not able to to come up with results. And if it's able to come up with results, it's the human who is going to be like the curator um, and it's going to pick like by hand 
uh, the results that you think that are more interesting than others. So here are some of the results that I got and I want to show you um, and do, sorry okay here for example um, how you can navigate the results so once you have your model ready you go here you click vector and you run the model so again it will start loading this won't take too much time Okay, so this is like I find like a poetic aspect of machine learning because what you what you create what the machine creates is called a latent space a latent space a dimension of infinite possibilities so you can be here like days or weeks or maybe years looking for all the options the the model creates and when you find uh, something that is interesting, like a shape or a color or a pattern, you can go there and save this image to your folder. And you navigate, you can go up, down, left, right, diagonal. And when you feel like, oh, this dimension is not showing me nothing interesting, I'm going... I'm bored, you just click here and you go to another dimension. So the model is able to create 512 dimensions and inside of each dimension there are like infinite options. So it's really like mind-blowing if you think about it. And it's showing you everything that is between your work and your other data set what your mind or your eyes are not able to to see and in a digital like way so it's beautiful i think it's a interesting digital tool to explore especially now and see and see what comes out from it uh, I will be posting the second part of my experiment in a couple of days and I hope you also find it like inspiring to explore different ways of creating and making in this new world where we are not able to access sometimes our workplace or the supply chain of our raw materials has been interrupted or we don't have like, like the tools to continue making what we used to do. So the virtual and the digital space seem like an easy option now. So let's see what, what happens. Thank you.